space, the resources, the opportunity. Jason Rhodes was always pushing boundaries, actively testing the limits, wanting to push beyond what was propriety, what's acceptable, which I think for him was connected to his own idea of artistic freedom. There's always a feeling when I'm sitting here driving around in the car, kind of coming back into the studio and kind of in and out of my head and in and out of reality. There's, there's something, there's something in, integrally important to the process that takes place in LA. Being a Californian was absolutely core to Jason's identity as an artist. He was born in 1965 near Sacramento. Jason portrayed his childhood as an idyllic and rural one, growing up doing farming activities, ranching activities, crafts. And these were all skills that he brought to his later work. He went on to the San Francisco Art Institute to study art, where he met the artist Rachel Cadori, who would become his wife. The two went to New York for a couple of years and returned to Los Angeles where Jason got his MFA at UCLA, studying with Richard Jackson and Paul McCarthy, uh, both of whom would become lifelong mentors and friends. This is this moment where LA is really re-emerging as a important center for contemporary art. It's also the rise of installation art and Jason becomes renowned for these large-scale installations that appear absolutely chaotic but are held together with formal systems, imaginative systems. It was materials, it was words, it was people through the work, jamming things together that wouldn't otherwise touch. You know, Duchamp's first Surrealist Papers exhibition. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this string that, that connected from the lights to the paintings. To, and it was a very, like, kind of sensuous, wet, which connected the artworks kind of physically, it, it, that it filled this space, this kind of pre-white cube space, and then it filled it, you know, and then what did that create? If you filled it well, you, if you filled it, you made kind of a, uh, a ne the next level. Jason's work has been referred to as being uh, proto-internet. At the same time that his work is evolving and developing, the internet is a new technology. In a way, every object, every um, image in Jason's work works like a hyperlink, taking you to another level or someplace else. Light was an important material for Jason Rhodes from the beginning. The neons bring language, which is ever-present in Jason's work, bring language to light. Topa is part of a much larger work, My Medina, in pursuit of my Hermitage from 2004. And it's one of a trilogy of works that occupies Jason Rose in his late work. Like most of Rhodes's words, terms, it's slippery with associations. Topa in Spanish means bump. There's the Topa Topa Mountains uh, in Southern California. Bump and bumping, of course, has its own sexual connotations. And I understand that Topa is Italian slang for female genitalia. In my own associative mind, uh, Topo also sits close to Topos, which is place. And at this point in Jason Rhodes's work and life, he's very much looking to build a place, his own place of retreat, an hermitage. I mean, there's always been this, this idea to, to build something, you know, that's a bit bigger than me so then it, so then it, you kind of t t push to or you kind of are always trying to to uh, keep up with it I mean the, if you know my work I mean things are never finished 
the provocation and pushing us to move beyond our inhibitions and our limits, where does he want us to go? He wants us to go to art, to the space of art, which is why Rhodes put everything of himself into his work, to create something bigger than himself, something even bigger than the work itself, like um, true faith or true love or a true connection. You have to let go of something to really experience it. There's something profound in this sublime and ridiculous power of Jason Rhodes's art's call to us for surrender. <laughs> <laughs>